I took this rather nice picture down at um, Castle Beach in Falmouth recently. Um, I love all the, the gorse coming in and I always like the rocks at low tide and just that sort of water with the, the light reflecting off it. Quite an interesting sky, but green on the headland. So that's going to be my starting point for my painting. What it turns out like uh, is anybody's guess, of course, because I don't really paint to order. So I'm going to start um, with this rather lovely Palest Blue by Wallace Seymour. If you haven't come across Wallace Seymour, they're a UK company that, um, that make paints, uh, oils and acrylics. I think they do watercolours as well, but um, very, very high pigment. Absolutely beautiful paints. I mean, look how lush that is. Sweep that down. So I'm in a nice blue sky day this. Looking forward to those again. We don't seem to have had many of them recently. I've just vaguely drawn in my horizon line just to possibly keep it as straight as I can. Um, so just laying down. That's lovely, that blue. So I think with paints you get what you pay for. Um, if you pay a bit more, you tend to get a little bit more pigment and if you pay a bit less, you probably get a bit more chalk. Having said that, I'm not snobby with my paints and I use a lot of very cheap ones as well. If I'm doing cheapish paints, actually, the, um, the Amsterdam acrylics are probably one of my favourites. They have very, very high pigment levels for the, uh, for the price. So I just use the, uh, the standard series. I don't use the, the posh ones on those. So there I am with a bit of nice blue. I think let's put some some white in while oh, that's still wet. Just, I don't know whether I should use a brush in this or, or palette knife. I seem to be doing a lot more palette knife at the moment. I think I like the variety of marks and the you know, a bit more sort of unpredictability. Possibly then you know, maybe work that in a bit. wet actually. Um, let me just smooth that over a bit. So that might be something that I work back into a bit when it's dried. As those of you who've seen me painting before know I'm not too precious and I don't worry too much if I lose something I like, if I do something I don't like. At this stage, everything is a work in progress. Actually, that's a bit nicer, softer. So I'm not sticking religiously to the photo. I have got it on the table in front of me, but I'm using it very much as my starting point. And whether this looks anything like Falmouth Bay, that's quite nice when it's finished. Um, remains to be seen, but it'll be inspired by, even if it's not off. It's, yeah, I, I might leave that for the moment. That's beginning to come together quite nicely. So while some of that is sorting itself out, I think I might come down and start building up a bit of the, the foreground. So I've actually squeezed out some of this, um, the Indian yellow. Um, these are one of the Atelier Interactives. So I, I used these a lot in the past, but I've, um, I haven't bought any more of them, but they they stay wet quite well. They're um, they're quite a nice paint to use from that point of view. But um, lovely warm colour in Indian yellow. I shall probably vary it a bit with maybe some brighter yellows. Uh, I do have the transparent yellow from Winsor and Newton, so I might just. So you'll see with this one where he's transparent that um, the light really shines through this. So it's a lovely, if you're going over something, the Indian yellow is quite a, opaque and will cover, whereas this one is a much lighter, see-through, transparent. And then into that, I'm just going to start gradually building up a few greens. So sometimes I start with this, which is very in your face. So this is a um, yellowish green. It's a very spring green. It's obviously much too green on its own, but when I'm just building up some layers at the 
at the beginning. And I shall probably use some of this over the top as well. It's a lovely, lovely, warm, lifting sort of green. So just working it in a bit, blending them over. And I think probably we need a few darks in that. So I've actually got a darker green on the go here as well. So you see, I mix mix up my types of paints and I'm sort of use whatever comes to hand. So I've got a golden one here, Terry Verte Hue, which is um, much deeper. Look at that. And I might just be starting to just, I don't know, mark make within this. So while the colours are wet, just shifting them around a bit. I quite like these some of these grasses that are just beginning to build up here. So it's really just sort of an impression of this sort of this greenery in, in front on the coast, on the coast path. This is walking along between Castle Beach and um, Gilling Bay's Beach in Falmouth. Again, drawing in with my palette knife there. Not wanting to sort of make it too fussy. I think some of that dim yellow could possibly be softened a bit and actually what might work in that is actually just softening that just with a little bit of blue. So just playing around with my colours here. So you know, areas where I've got some of this really bright colour are beginning to, to sort of tone in a bit now. I quite like this dark patch here. It's almost sort of like rocks. In fact, I might even use some of that dark green in the rocks. So just sort of going back, you know, this this is the, the photo. Um, I don't know if that's coming out under there or not. Um, so quite sort of loose interpretation at the moment. I'm just going to work into some of these rocks, I think, now. So for the rocks, I'm going to... Just go with a, a brown. So this is the um, uh, the raw umber actually from another Amsterdam one. A lot of my paints these days actually are the Amsterdam ones. I've been sort of increasingly um, being drawn to them. I bought a lot of them when I was doing some workshops um, because, as I say, they uh, they're relatively sort of cost effective. But I've actually found that I've enjoyed using them so much that they're almost becoming my sort of Go to. So I'm feeling I need the rocks a bit darker. What have I got handy that's dark? Oh, I've got my um, a liquid um, Payne's Grey. Let's put a little bit of that out. That's a really good dark. So let's bend, bring a bit of that in just on these rocks. So, you know, beginning to build up this sort of sense of this rocky shore. But I'm not I'm not somebody who paints every rock. I'm not somebody who is interested in a uh, particularly sort of realistic interpretation. I'm just trying to sort of capture that sense of it from my memories of being there. And it's that feeling of that, the dark, the dark of the rocks against that sort of light of the the water where the sun's brought it through. That's yeah, too much brown here, so that's obviously going to have to be lifted a bit. But everything's you know, very wet. Um, this is a, a high, um, high uh, a thick paper um, because I like to be able to punish it, if you like, and do lots to it. And I think if you've got a, a heavy duty paper, it's just a bit more forgiving. Uh, even, ooh, yeah, there's been a bit of darks in there. It's always nice to get some contrast in. So I'm not actually even looking at the picture anymore because I've I've really moved away from it. Um, I'm just responding, I suppose, um, which is how I tend to paint. Sort of put some paint down and respond to it and think, you know, what? Where do I need to go from from there? I'm really liking this beautiful deep black against some of these greens and yellows. Cover it up a bit. So very, very loose here. 
Um, what we put in the middle there? I'm not sure whether white is... White's a bit too white, isn't it? Doesn't, doesn't quite work. Um, that could almost still be a bit of blue because the sea would come down a bit further in my picture than it does in the photo. Depends really where I'm standing and looking from as to... I'm not sure going up over this bit. I think I might take some of that off. So I've got all sorts of different tools I'm using. Um, I have got a brush here in case I decided I wanted it. So I'm feeling that that's a little bit too harsh. So let's just... Of course, I've still got my headland put in, so I'm not worried really about, you know, where's my, where's my horizon? I'm loving this blue. This is just such a beautiful summery blue. I think I'd probably build up a bit more darks over that. But can you see how already it's it's sort of getting that feel of the sunlight coming down and hitting the, the rocks and the water sort of showing through as the sun hits it on a on a calm day. As we do get lovely calm days down there. I yeah, I'm not quite liking the looseness of what's going on. I'm not wanting to play too much more with that in case I lose it. Uh, again, those of you that have watched me paint before will know that it's very easy to do a bit you like and then lose it pretty quickly. So I think what I'm wanting is a bit of, hmm, a bit of something, maybe the green and the grey sort of indicate. Oh, look, so I've got a bit of, I hadn't really expected to have that still on the brush, but on the palette knife. So that's how sometimes things happen when you've got stuff on the palette knife or the brush that you hadn't realised was on there. Again, I might work back into this with um, pastels or uh, neocrayons or something afterwards. It really depends sort of how far I get to with the paint, but I'm not a purist by any sense, stretch of the imagination. I'm very much let it have what it needs. Uh, That's got some quite nice sort of feeling of the rocks and the gorse. I'm loving this. I'm not so sure that I like that blue bit across there. It feels a bit too blue for me. Can we soften that a bit without losing it? Maybe a bit of a squidgy. I mean, it's useful to have sort of all your tools to hand when you start because you never really quite, well, I never really quite know what I'm going to need, what I'm going to use. So I think the combination of the the blue and the brown is quite nice. Either of them on their own is, it doesn't quite work. So the tide goes out, right out along here. Uh, it's probably my favourite time. I've, I've, I'm always fascinated by the when the tide goes out, as they say. Now that probably has lost that hard edge because I've gone in while that was still a bit wet. So let's just build up a little bit more rock there, and then I think I might go back to the the sky or the headland. I don't know. Do I? I don't even know whether I need a headland anymore on this. Mm. Quite a nice line there, isn't it? Um, do we want some headland? Let's put a bit in and see what happens. So I can come in probably, I don't know, about here. I mean, these are quite good if you want a straight line. Um, and then just pull the colour up. I'm feeling that that almost wants to be the green. Um, I didn't really have enough paint probably on there to do what I was thinking, so let's just come in with some of the palette knife on, Ooh, bit on the sea where I didn't want it. I think we can, we can lose that at this stage. I think that might need a smaller brush. Let's just all that in maybe with the a 
these little IKEA brushes are my little go-to brushes. I have sets of all the different sizes. They're children's brushes actually for um often go this small, but sometimes you sort of feel it's necessary. To the headland, and there's of course it's hints of yellow on the headland, so I think we might just go in with a much brighter yellowy green. So, where's that? It's sort of over here, it's sort of hitting. It might turn out to be a bit too bright for the distance, but let's, let's see where that goes. If it's quite fiddly for me, I don't, I don't really fiddle that much. This has become quite a quite a fiddly painting, which yeah. Now do I put the headland in behind it? I think do you know what? I think probably not. I'm not entirely happy that my sky is finished. Let's just soften this top corner a bit. The whites are a bit too white for me. almost is it wanting a tiny bit of grey in it let's just see what happens if we just bring just a little bit of slightly darker in the problem is that the sky is still a bit wet so um, the paint is sort of lifting um, it's good to work in when it's really wet and it's good to work in when it's really dry but the in-between stage when it's neither quite wet nor dry as insists at the moment, it's a bit challenging. Now, I've actually had some yellow on my fingers and I'm quite liking how that's, what well, that's added. That's better. That's warmed it up, hasn't it? Bring that yellow down onto the horizon there. Might even bring that down a bit further. And then I think possibly so I just burble on here, don't I? Uh, possibly bring some of this brighter blue back. It's making this white down here look very white. So I'm thinking that I might actually be wanting just to soften that as well. Just a little bit of oh, too much. Um, I didn't want to lose that headland because I'm actually quite liking that headland there. So just being a little bit careful what I do around here. That blue, that white was just too, too harsh there. Now that I've painted other bits of the painting, sometimes you don't know until you sort of work into it and then you sort of do a bit and you have to go back and work over some of the bits you did earlier because they no longer sort of tie in. It's always that toing and froing and adding a bit and sort of changing a bit and thinking, you know, what does it need? So my sky is in danger of becoming overworked. So I, I need to hang fire on that and possibly go back to it later. Although actually, I'm quite liking where we are with it. I'm quite liking this little bit of dark in the corner here. Let's just have a bit of sort of... I don't know, cloud burst coming in there. Does that look a bit strange? It's just a bit of light, isn't it? So because I've actually got quite a straight horizon, I think I probably need to actually have a completely straight one because um, my sky originally was going to blend into it, but it's ended up not really. If you get a little bit sticky up on the horizon like that, you don't need to worry about it because that becomes always like a little bit of a mountain, you know, another rock or something out there. I might do a little bit more on the sky later. But for the moment, um, yeah, I'm not displeased with how that's looking. I'll peel the tape off in a minute and see what it looks like. Well, in fact, I could even peel the tape off now while we're, while we're looking at it. Ah, because they always look quite different. 
when you get that white edge to them. use some um, low-tack decorators tape from my hardware shop it seems to do the trick but you can see already as the as the tape comes off it just sort of frames the picture I, I find it um, quite an interesting device and I have to say I'm quite pleased with that look at that little blob there nice little rock there and where there's bits of white paper showing here that's just like the sun glinting through on it. My horizon, I've just realised, has now gone up. So when that's a little bit drier, I'm just going to work back into that and just straighten that off. But now is not a time to touch that. So that is the only thing I think that needs to be changed. <laughs>